guys. Today we're going to read Saturdays and Tea Cakes. I chose this book for you guys because it's one of my very favorite books and I hope you like it too. Saturdays and Tea Cakes. When I was nine or ten years old, I couldn't wait for Saturdays. Every Saturday I got up early, dressed, and rolled my bicycle out of the garage. Every Saturday, I coasted down our long, steep driveway, slowing only enough to make the turn onto Thompson Street, then left onto Bells Mill Road. Pedal, pedal, pedal past Mrs. Cofield's house. Pedal, pedal, pedal around the horse pasture and up the hill past the cemetery where my grandfather was buried. Pedal, pedal, pedal past Miss Grace Owen's house and up to Chandler Phillips 66. Phillips 66 is a gas station. Every Saturday, I coasted over the black hose by the gas pump just to make the bell ring. Then I dropped my kickstand and I checked the air in my tires. I stopped at Chandler's for another reason too. That's where I crossed the highway that ran right through the center of my town. My mother always said, you stop and you look both ways when you get to Chandler's. I don't care if the light's green. I'll hear about it if you don't. And I knew she would too. In our little town, everyone knew everybody and told everything to anyone who would listen. So I always looked both ways. Pedal, pedal, pedal across Raw Street, then left for a slow coast down behind the bank of Hefton, where I turned right onto Bedwell, and whoosh, I zoomed downhill as fast as I dared. Pedal, 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 up the next hill and left onto Almond Street. It was a long stretch to Mr. White's. I always stopped there to catch my breath in the shade of the old oak tree. One more small hill, pedal, 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 and then a right on Gaither Street. Now I could see my grandmother's drive. There he is resting. His dog must have went with him because his dog was at the first page when he was leaving his driveway, and there he is again. One, two, three, four driveways and one last turn to the left. This was where my tire gave up their humming on the pavement and began crunching of gravel. Just before reaching Mama's back porch, I slammed on my brakes, sending a shower of tiny pebbles into her flowers. Every Saturday, Mama was there, sitting on her old metal glider, Creak, crack, creak, crack, sipping a cup of red diamond coffee and waiting. She was waiting for me. No one else, just me. Every Saturday morning, Mama called out, Come on into this house. Let's have us a bite to eat. In Mama's big kitchen, sunlight poured through the windows like a waterfall and spilled over the countertops, pooling up on the checkerboard floor. Every Saturday, she had hot biscuits, sweet butter, and gold eagle syrup waiting on the kitchen table. Every Saturday, she poured a little coffee in my cup and filled the rest with milk and two spoonfuls of sugar. Then before long, Mama said, we best clear these dishes away and get that yard before it gets too hot. I followed her out to the back porch. Let me put a little water on these ferns, she said. You go on ahead to the car house. That's what Mama called the garage. I'll be there directly. By the time I pulled the old lawnmower from the garage, Mama was already garden picking plump ripe tomatoes for our lunch. Every Saturday, I pulled the starter rope again and again while the mower sputtered and spit. Finally, that old mower started and I struggled to push it through the dew-wit grass, leaving row after row of fresh stripes on the lawn. From time to time, the mower choked on mouthfuls of wet grass that clung to the blades and to my bare legs. 
but by early afternoon, the dew pearls were gone. The grass was mowed and dried, and I was soaked with sweat. Every Saturday, I pushed the mower back into the garage, trudged to the back porch, and flopped onto that old glider. Creak, crack, creak, crack. Mamma soon appeared with a tall glass of sweet iced tea. You just cool off and rest the spell. I'm going to make us a bite to eat. Before long, she came back with two big tomato sandwiches on hamburger buns. Every Saturday, I gobbled mine down like a hungry dog, but she nibbled on hers like a bird. Now them some good tomatoes, she said. I know how you like a good tomato sandwich. Don't they taste a whole heap better when you just pick them? We sat there a while listening to the calls of the Blue Jays and the rhythm of that old glider. Then Mama looked, me, looked at me sort of sideways and said, I reckon I know a boy who'd like something sweet to eat. And I grinned, yes ma'am, I reckon you do. Come on then, Mama said, head towards the door. Let's get into this kitchen and see if we can't make us a mess. Every Saturday, she spread a cloth over the red countertop and scattered a fistful of flour across it, sending a cloud into the air. Then she set out a big bowl. Mama dipped a china teacup into a canister of flour, scooped out a cupful, and skimmed over the top of her, skimmed over it with the top of her finger. Then she dumped the flour onto the bowl, into the bowl, and added sugar from her black cookie jar. She let the mixture drift through her hands like I sifted a sand at the beach. When it felt right, Mama said, look in, that look in that refrigerator, that's what she called her refrigerator, and find me two sticks of blue bonnet, blue bonnet's butter. I pulled open the refrigerator and got out the margarine. I unwrapped the sticks and dropped them into the bowl. I mixed and mashed and mixed and mashed until the ingredients disappeared into a paste. It was smooth and pale yellow and smelled like fresh cotton candy at the county fair. Mama pinched off a little to taste. I expect we need a little more sugar in this. She sprinkled sugar onto the dough and tasted just the way she thought it ought to. Now give me three eggs, she said. I tapped the first egg too hard, making it splatter onto the counter and down the side of the bowl. I reckon we can call that half an egg, Mama said. Here, let me show you how to do it. Just tap them easy and pull the shell apart over the bowl like this. Now you do the next one. Mama didn't get mad at him. She just helped him understand how to do it. It was hard work blending those eggs into the mix with a long wooden spoon. Mama pinched another taste. My goodness, buddy, we didn't put no vanilla in here. Reach up in that cabinet and get me down a bottle of vanilla flavor. When the dough tasted just right, Mama rolled it out on the flour dusted cloth. Then I cut out the tea cakes with the rim of an old tin can. We carefully lifted the circles onto the cookie sheet and put them in the oven to bake 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Those 15 minutes seem to last forever. Are they ready, Mama? Not yet, buddy. Are they ready now, Mama? Not yet, buddy. Let's give them a little bit longer. Are they ready yet, Mama? I reckon they might be. She opened the oven door and the kitchen filled with the smell sweeter than summer gardenias. The smell of tea cakes. Every Saturday, I reached for one still steaming on the baking sheet. You, you better wait, buddy. They're going to be mighty hot just yet. We waited until the tea cakes were cool enough to lift from the baking sheet. Then we set them off on a plate. Every Saturday I ate one and then another and I looked at Mama. Is that all you want, buddy? 
You be sure to eat all you want. We made them tea cakes just for you. When I had eaten all I could, she set a few off on a saucer for herself and put the rest on a big sheet of aluminum foil. She folded the edges into a little handle on top. Now you put these out there in your bicycle basket so you won't forget them. Look at the little handle she made on the aluminum foil. That's cute. Every Saturday, as I pedaled over the gravel again and out Mamaw's driveway, I glanced back over my shoulder. Every Saturday, Mamaw was there sitting on her old metal glider and waving. She was waving to me. No one else, just me. Don't worry, Mamaw. I won't ever forget. That's the end.